welcome to another episode of I Am Nano. Putting the I in I Am Nano, I am your host, Irfani. And I am your other host, Monica. And today, we're going to be talking about smart shoes. The Lit Update today aims to develop self-powered smart shoes that can monitor changes in the body weight of a user. Very excited to discuss this topic. From watching the Tokyo Olympics earlier this year, there was a lot of talk about carbon fiber enhanced shoes and mm-hmm. tracks as well. And that gave a greater number of records and personal best. So I wanted to look into what was new in this discipline for 2021 and what research labs were doing. So this paper was released in December 2020, but you know with how publishing volumes work, it was actually published in February 2021 in the issue of Advanced Materials Technologies, and the work was done in Cheung-A University in Seoul, South Korea. Yes, and I was very curious as to what some of the research was around the world regarding footwear. And I came across this work, and specifically, the researchers investigated an energy harvester and sensor that would be flexible and adaptable to body movements during walking and running. Right, and so most smart shoes today, developed by the researchers and the ones that are commercially available, smart insoles especially, perform foot pressure monitoring using compressive load applied to the insole. But in this way, it's very difficult to actually monitor changes in motion and body weight. Yes, exactly. And to add to that, there is ongoing research on energy harvesting shoes using piezoelectric ceramics. A piezoelectric ceramic is a smart material that converts a mechanical energy, such as pressure, movement, or even vibrations, into an electrical signal. Piezoelectricity is a term that describes the electric charge that accumulates in certain solid materials. So we can have energy harvesting shoes with these piezoelectric ceramics that can generate a large amount of energy through external dynamic loads, such as our movements. Yes, however, piezoelectric ceramics have rigid and fragile frameworks on top of having low toughness and ductility. So it makes them very vulnerable to impacts generated during walking and running. Yes, currently very useful, but not yet so practical. Mm -hmm. So in this work, a smart shoe prototype was fabricated by installing a stretchable polymer piezo resistive tension type sensors and piezoelectric ribbon harvesters with energy generating capabilities. A lot of experiments definitely going on in this work. Mm -hmm. They developed a tension type piezoelectric ribbon harvester and piezo resistive sensors, as you said, which were used in their prototype smart shoes capable of generating electrical energy and monitoring body weight changes. But it's not only making these materials and then testing them repetitively in the lab on machines, it's also studying the materials and putting them in actual running shoes and then observing their potential there and then looking at how to make the connections of the circuits and the ribbons as efficient as possible for the best energy harvesting performance. Right. So not only do they have to install the devices in the smart shoes, but then also have them to work to monitor body weight changes and then energy changes fit performance in real time. And that's a lot of effort. And the prototype runs and collects all the data through Bluetooth. So there's a lot of aspects that need to run properly. Yes, a lot of effort just going into doing that. Mm -hmm. And to address the nanotech aspect in this work, A conductive layer was made using carbon nanotubes and a polymer called poly-3,4-ethylene dioxythiophene, and that's abbreviated to P-E-D-O-T, (laughs) P-DOT. P-DOT, that sounds very funny. (laughs) A fun acronym for sure. And the material for the overall ribbon was polyvinyl diene fluoride, PVDF, Not as fun to say as PDOT, though. Not as fun to say, but it's a really common polymer. We can find them in piping products, sheet, tubing, films, plate, and even insulator for premium wire. 
It can be used in repeated contact with food products as it is FDA compliant and non-toxic below its degradation temperature. Yes, a very useful polymer indeed. And I'll add a bit more here on the work that was done. So a piezoresistive composite ribbon sensor was made and it was used to monitor those body weight changes. So specifically, the researchers used carbon black and multi-walled carbon nanotubes as functional nanopowders to fabricate a piezoresistive composite ribbon sensor. And then PDMS, a previous polymer we have discussed, was used as a stretchable matrix. Mm -hmm. And not only do you have to specifically go through the trials and lit review of what materials to use when making the composites, but you also have to develop the material and determine the best method of fabrication. And then after all that, you have to make up the actual prototype and make it work. A lot of effort goes into one single paper. And, you know, research and science and discovery, that takes a lot of time and effort. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we both know that. Yes. And it's very important that we recognize the efforts of our fellow scientists and engineers. You know, there's a lot of tensile testing done in this work. So checking the mechanical strengths of the materials, attempting different ratios of the carbon black and the multi-wall carbon nanotubes, you know. Yeah. And even just deciding, hey, I want to use carbon black and the multi-wall tubes mm -hmm. versus the single wall, like that's decisions right there being taken and, you know, lots mm -hmm. of trial and error going on there. And interesting enough is the conclusion from some of the testing was that unstretched ribbon sensors had 22% less sensitivity relative to the pre-stretched sensors when the resistance was changed and they were compared over cyclic repetitive tests. So that means it's better to have them pre-stretched than unstretched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after that, they went and installed the sensors in the shoes, remodeling the insoles, and then observing changes in the senses and body weight. Mm -hmm. And then for the energy harvesting portion of the work, that happened with the piezoelectric composite that was on the outer shoe frame. Mm -hmm. And that was important so that we could harvest the energy from vibrations or movements. And then we don't need to have the device powered by an external battery. Right. So to confirm again, just to be clear, carbon black and multi-wall carbon nanotubes was used for the weight sensor. And the PVDF was in the ribbon for the energy harvesting. Yes, exactly. And then on top of the shoe where the shoelaces were, that's where the module of a battery went to store the energy being collected and additional circuitry and the Bluetooth sensor. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work that goes into this, a lot, a lot of work. And what were some of the applications testing of the shoes? So this type of wearable with the body weight and foot pressure sensor can be used for medical purposes to determine differences in gait patterns and to check the difference between walking abnormalities versus maybe normal pedestrians. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the shoes can guide the wearer showing maybe appropriate directions to an emergency exit if there's a catastrophe going on using LEDs or vibrations or different electrical signals because it's all self-powered by the body and it's also connected to the Wi-Fi. And of course, it can be used in running or maybe walk racing, maybe because the sensor could be useful for distance monitoring, but you know, right now it's a little bit too heavy. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, carbon plated running shoes. I mean, those have improved cushioning to allow for faster recovery and decreases muscle fatigue, right? Yes, so I've heard. And I've also noticed that it stated that they increase speed and they also apparently decrease chronic injuries. But the prototype in this paper specifically is not quite for that application, though I am sure it could be since it is nanocarbon based. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of variations of carbon nanomaterials everywhere. And, you know, I think we could actually have just a one hour episode just talking about all the wonderful carbon nanomaterials and all their different applications. Yes, for sure. I agree. Yeah, really cool if you think about all the science that goes into shoes. I mean, I just to put them on, but there's a lot of development and science you have to consider. Yes, exactly. I wouldn't think of footwear as being a prominent field of research for wearables, but it's certainly fascinating. Mm -hmm, for sure. 
All right, everyone, that is all the Nana for today. Take care and stay curious. <laughs>